welcome to episode two of Physically Fat, Chewing the Fit podcast from Physically Fit. I'm Simon Yates, uh, the owner of Physically Fit, and uh, today's episode is going to be about core values. So what do we mean by core values? <clears throat> well, if you look at the dictionary definition, core values are the fundamental beliefs of a person or organisation, the guiding principles dictating behaviour and can help understand the difference between right and wrong. So why did I decide to come up with my core values? Well, after being in the industry for now 25 years, I felt I had to sort of put my flag in the ground, as it were, stake my claim to what I believed in and and stood by it, basically. I mean, for years now, I've been training people, helping people, working in the industry, and I feel that I've put in my time, I've put in my graft, I've learned my trade and now I'm at that point where I can say, right, these are what I believe in and this is what I stand for. And life's too short and too precious to waste it just on useless pursuits and blindly following others. So I'm just going to stand for what I believe in. And I think as a coach as well, if you if you believe in 100% in what you're doing, then I think your clients are going to believe in you. That's the most important thing. And you may sort of now sort of be asking yourself, well, what are my core values? And frankly, I have no idea because you have to discover your own or you adhere to your coach's core values. But I feel if you've been training for a long time, then you should start to develop your own. You probably have some without even realising it. A core, a core value could be something as simple as sticking to your program. That's a value a concrete rule that you live by. And uh, does it matter if you go off program on a certain day or add five kilos to what your coach told you to do? No, in the bigger picture, not really. But um, it does show you're now violating one of the core values and you're lacking the discipline and accountability that you originally set out to adhere to. So I'll just run you through mine. Um... Sorry if they're a bit long and laborious, but I just want to run you through them. So my first one I believe in is, is taking a step back. Now, I know this one will hurt a lot of egos and uh, takes a lot more self-discipline than lifting a one rep max or a max effort workout. Um, why, why do I do this one? Well, I believe passionately in the theory of taking one step back to move two steps forward. It's a massive cliche, but it's a cliche for a reason. It works. No man or woman is a machine. Even machines need to back off, otherwise they break. The human body is no different. If you keep pushing and pushing, sooner or later, something's going to break or burn out. So what I tend to think is if you if you think about the end goal when you start on your training program or cycle, it's not about the weight on the bar or beating personal records on a weekly basis. It's about you reaching that preset goal and taking all the necessary steps you need to to get to your target and hopefully injury free. Limiting the risks, you can do this by just by taking that step back. You could you gotta run you gotta learn to walk before you can run, basically. And starting a program already halfway to burnout isn't gonna do you any favours whatsoever. So start slowly and a lot lighter than you would normally train. Perfect your technique on lighter weights and aim to just hit the targets each week. There's no point in aiming for a 300 kilo deadlift if you can't even perform a perfect 200 kilo deadlift, for instance, from multiple perfect reps, every single rep looking exactly the same. So with that said, so yeah, take a step back or in another ways, looking at it is just to start too light as it were so go a lot lighter than you normally would and just believe in the process that you will get there so that's the first one take it a step back my second core value is to progress slowly again again i'm i'm, I'm can guarantee a lot of people are going to find this a very unpopular one again because it's going to mean leaving the ego and your instagram at the door I know, controversial, but stick with me. You'll get plenty of content for your Instagram or whatever at the end of your program when you're smashing personal bests or you're picking up that trophy at next comp. 
because at the end of the day, we want PBs, we do, we want to lift heavier weights, but we also don't want the form police on our backs going, oh yeah, you may have lift that, but it looks shit. So yeah, so progress slowly and make sure 100% that your form is keeping up with your strength gains. So I don't mean you can't push yourself or aim for big workouts. All I'm saying is to use a bit of self-discipline and stick to the program you've been given or the, the one that you've worked out for yourself. You know, there's plenty of you out there that can can do your own programming. You don't need a coach for that. But if you have got a coach's program, then believe in your coach, trust in your coach and stick with the program that he's given you. So you're not going to get a PB or a one rep max every time you go into the gym. It's just not going to happen. So you've got to think about that when you're doing your program and think about the bigger picture and what your ultimate goal is. So, I mean, I'm just as guilty as everyone else when it comes to come going off program or having a mad session or attempting some stupid feat of strength I've never tried before. And again, like I said on the last one, there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, as you, as long as you realise it's not going to get you to where you want to go any quicker than sticking to your program. So, and it, not only that, you know, as I've ha- it's happened to me before, it's happened to a lot of people I know. It, it gives you, it leads to injury. And it can affect your next workout. If you're going balls to the wall, when it comes to your next workout, I can guarantee you're just not going to have the same strength that you had following your program. So, okay, it may feel like taking a step back. And and I've actually had a client say that to me before, where they've been on my program for about, well, not even two weeks. And they were like, oh, I feel like I'm getting weaker on your program. And I'm like, yeah, that's the point. You're going back to the basics and you're performing them right. So yeah, you are going you are going to suffer some ultimately poundage differences in what you're lifting because you're now lifting it correctly. I mean, I've seen people pull 250, 280 deadlifts awful and you know that they can get to a lot more if they just correct that form. So yeah, progress slowly, make sure everything looks good and at the end of the day, you want to be able to look at those videos you're sticking on Instagram. Or, you know, even for your own purpose, your video in those workouts and you look back at them and you go, yeah, I'm happy with that rep. Okay, it may not have been Eddie Hall's 500 kilos or possibly half those 501. We'll have to wait and see. But at the end of the day, it's a perfect deadlift or it's a perfect squat. And that, to me, I would rather see that from every client than clients sending me 500, or oh, sorry, 300 kilo deadlifts that are hitched and bounced and just awful form because yeah you've lifted 300 kilos congratulations but it looks shit and you really don't want to look back on that and go oh god was that was that how i did it okay anyway we'll leave it there uh, so yeah progress slowly my third one is my favorite one and that's stick to the basics okay so with the invention of instagram now, we've got a lot of people trying to reinvent the wheel. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not a hater. I don't, you know, go, oh, look at that. That's what that shit that is. If that's what they want to do, then great, crack on. You know, I really don't mind. But my core value is stick to the basics. You cannot get better than compound movements. They are still the king, and they will still make you stronger than anything else. And I believe that till I go to my grave. Your squat, your bench press, your deadlift, your overhead press, all these movements – Hocking. Everything else to me is supplementary. Variations of those are supplementary. Those are the ones. If you want to get strong, then forget all the new age stuff. Stick to the basics. Get strong in these and everything else will get pulled along with it. If you want a big log lift, then get strong overhead. If you want a big stone lift, then pull a bigger deadlift. You want a better yoke, then squat. These things will help your strongman events But not only that, they will help you no matter what your goal is, whether it's looking good, uh, whether you want to be fitter, whether you want to be stronger, whether you're just looking for a physique transformation, whether you want to be a better bodybuilder. All these movements will help you get to your goal more than anything else. A lot of trainers will would love you to believe that getting strong is a vastly complicated equation that only they understand or their method is the latest, greatest thing. But in reality, It's just another progressive resistance program dressed up to look super scientific. 
So try and cut through the bullshit if you can. Stick to the basics and, and you can't go wrong. Yes, there are amazing trainers out there and amazing coaches like the likes of Delroy McQueen and Adam Bishop and I mean, I mean, there's loads. There's loads I can mention. Dave Tate, Jim Wendler. The, the list is endless of amazing coaches that have devised training programs to help this. But what you will find common throughout all of these coaches' programs is they all include the big lifts. Every single one of those programs will have a squat, will have a bench, will have a deadlift. If it's a strongman program, I might have an overhead press instead of a bench press. But at the end of the day, there will be big lifts in there that will be on a progressive program. So, again, taking those, going back to the first two core values, as you know, they all tie in together. Stick to your program, progress slowly, start too light, and you will get stronger, and you will progressively get better. But not only that, you will become more efficient, more technically proficient at any lift you choose. Your structure in different levels of intensity and workload, and most importantly, add variety. The very, very body, sorry, is very, very good at adapting to any kind of stimulus put on it. So make sure that you vary every aspect and utilize every variation of those basics as well. Because at the end of the day, if you if you just squat, 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 squat all the time, sooner or later there becomes that point where A, you're just not going to get any better or you're going to start to tear out into bad habits. So try and use all the variations that you can to try and keep those movements fresh. But at the end of the day, it's still a squat, it's still a bench press, it's still a deadlift, it's still an overhead press, it's just a variation of said movement. So don't reinvent the wheel is what I'm basically trying to say. The wheel works perfectly fine, unless you're a strong man and then you try and flip it end over end, totally negating the point of a tyre in the first place, but that's another story. So leading on to number four then. So there's five of these all together. Sorry, I should have mentioned that at the beginning, but so in case you think, God, this is going on and on and on. But I am rambling through them as quickly as I can because I don't want this to be a four-hour podcast that you get bored with halfway through. So my number four is set goals. So basically what I mean by that is every program or training cycle should have two things. Well, more than two, but there's two fundamentals. One, an end goal, and two, some form of weekly target. So your end goal can be a build-up to a comp, for instance, or a meet, or it can be simply just setting a new PB. It can just about having you completing the program from A to B, really. It doesn't have to be anything amazing, but whatever your goal is, they must be treated with the same drive, discipline, and adherence to any of the others. Do not sort of think, oh, it's not a comp, or it's not it's not for anything special, I'm just doing it, but then you're, you're not going to do it. You're only going to do it half-heartedly. And at the end of the day, progression comes in many forms and you don't have to be a top-level strongman or a top-level powerlifter to set goals. Um, so your weekly targets could be minute. They could be anything from changing a rep range or a certain weight at a certain rep target or getting better at your speed work, um, your perceived exertion, for instance, is, was it a 10 last week and now it's only an eight? So to me, that's that's a goal. That's that's You've got better at that movement. So anything that will alleviate the boredom and, and help with your motivation, your discipline, and your overall sense of achievement is a goal. So don't worry about setting huge goals, but make sure you set something. I hear so many people, especially now with this COVID going on, and they're, they're going, oh, I'm lacking motivation. There's only so much I can do in the garden, and there's only so many pres- – I mean, there's loads of trainers putting out challenges out there, you know, silly little challenges that you could try. Again, these are just goals, you know, go for it. Just pick one and do it. It will help massively with your motivation. Do a little like I'm doing on my Instagram at the moment. I'm just doing like a little video diary and it's just keeping me on track because I find it, you know, I find it hard to motivate myself some days to go out into the garden and, and move all the kit around and start training. It's so much easier when you just walk into the gym and the kit's there ready to go rather than have to get it all out and set it all up. But, you know, I've set that little video diary for myself so that I'm I'm accountable to me. And also my clients can see me still plodding along and hopefully, if I can, motivate them in some way to think, well, you know, he's still doing it, so I guess I should. So the other thing about setting goals is, is to not get downhearted when you don't reach those goals. 
So you, not every time when you set a goal for your training program, are you going to meet that goal? There might be outside pressures such as stress. You know, you're at work too much. You've not been eating too well. You've not been sleeping too well. Too much is going on. So you have, but don't get disheartened because along that road to those big goals, you have set little ones along the way. And the main thing is you haven't gone backwards. You are still moving forward. And every, I know it's another cliche, sorry, but another thing to remember is that every time you're climbing a mountain, you've got to take one step at a time. So every step forward is a step closer to your goal. I know, sorry, it's a horrendous cliche, but it's so true. Moving forward is, is the only thing we can do, you know, or moving sideways, as long as you don't move backwards. So just to uh, summarize that, Let's just say that, so yeah, setting your, setting your small goals will lead to your big goals, basically. And keeping that motivation is the, is the most important thing. So adhering to those little goals leading to the big goal will help you keep on track. So if you do find you are falling short, just write that workout off. Come back another day, do it another day. And again, like I say, I don't want to keep repeating myself, but just keep moving forward. Set goals, smash them, set new ones, always move forward. Okay, so finally then, I'm just going to go into rest and recovery. So this is a fifth and final one, which I think is, is just as important as the rest because if we don't get that rest and recovery in our training programs or in our daily lives, then we will start moving backwards and we will start missing goals. So it may seem strange to some of you that I have this as a core value, but I am a massive believer in rest and recovery and getting in everything you need to keep you moving forward. And this is a massive, it's a massive element. So rest can come in many forms. So I'll just outline a few for you that I like to employ with all my athletes and clients. Firstly, take a day off. Simple as that, really. If you're sore, you're tired, and you really can't face the gym, then take a day off. Even if it's not one of your scheduled rest days, and it's just an extra day. But as long as these don't turn into excuses not to go to the gym, go, oh, I'm a bit tired today, I won't go today. Are, are, you, are you genuinely tired, or you just can't be asked? So you've got to make sure that when you're taking these extra days off, it's for a genuine reason, like you are, I've got horrendous doms, or you just know you're not going to lift what you need to lift. But sitting on the couch watching the telly and thinking, do you know what? I can't be asked. That's, that's not the same thing as taking an unscheduled day off. So if your program is correct, then you shouldn't really have a case of that overtraining anyway. But, you know, don't get me wrong, there are going to be days when you've been busy or you've missed meals or whatever, and the next day you're just too tired. But trust me, these should be far and few between if you're if you're sticking to your program. These shouldn't be a regular occurrence because you have scheduled rest days, so there's no reason for you to be taking extra, extra rest days. Secondly then, sleep. So I know this is an obvious one, but it's also an overlooked one. You may think you're getting enough sleep, but is your sleep quality? And that's, I think that's really important. I mean, I know guys that can survive on five, six hours sleep, but they're probably having five, six hours sleep. Whereas you get other people who say, oh, well, I, I was in bed for nine, 10 hours the other night. But yeah, how much of that did you actually sleep? And how much of that was you tossing and turning and changing direction and, and waking up and falling back asleep? Especially like when you get people in the morning to sort of go, oh, well, I woke up at five, so I forced myself to go back to sleep. And I woke up at six and I was still too early, so I forced myself. That's not quality sleep. That's broken sleep. And that can make you feel just as shit as getting a good night's sleep. So, there, I mean, there's many apps and watches and God knows what else out there now that track sleep patterns. So it might be worth checking one out and seeing, seeing how they work for you. And also a good... A good little trick I try to employ, if I can, I mean, obviously we're working that, it doesn't always work that way, but trying to have a 20 to 30 minute mid-afternoon nap, afternoon nap, no longer than that. If you start getting into an hour, hour and a half, you're only going to affect your nighttime sleep. But that little 20 minute, 30 minute shut eye, you'll wake up, you'll be like, oh God, I feel like shit now, I shouldn't have done that. But 10 minutes later, you'll be like, oh, you know, that's perked me up a bit. So stick with it. It's, it's definitely worth it if you can. I mean, obviously it's not an eye an ideal situation to just sit in your office and have a 20 minute nap. But if, if life allows, then, then try it. Definitely. 
And then finally on that one, um, deload and back off days. So in all my clients' programs, I will program in some kind of deload or back off days into their training program. So days when they'll do, mainly I'll, I'll, I'll put in speed work, which is sort of training at 40, 50% of their normal poundages and just working on their speed and technique. So this is, you know, it's a hard workout doing the speed work, but at the same time, you're not massively overloading that central nervous system like you would be doing 80, 85, 90% of your one rep maxes. So that can work as a kind of deload. So I try and put speed work in sort of every week, really, to give those sort of deload elements. And then towards the end of the process, sort of four weeks into the program or six weeks, depending on what I'm programming them for, I'll put in an actual deload week where they'll do all their major movements at probably 60% of what they would normally be working at. And uh, a lot of people don't like these for some reason. They're just like, oh, no, I want to, I was feeling really strong and I just want to carry on benching heavy. But your body will thank you in the long run. Your ego might not, but your your body definitely will. And you're going to reach your goals a lot quicker if you allow your body that time to recover. So, yeah, like I said, you know, it comes in many forms, you know, 60% load workout, speed workouts, doing a hypertrophy bodybuilding style pump workout where you're using light weights and just pumping the blood into the muscle, reducing the volume on your workouts. That also works. So although recovery is is very important, I'm also a, a big believer in active recovery. So, for instance, say you've done a brutal leg workout, for instance, and you've got the most horrendous doms the next day and you can barely sit on the toilet or get up off the couch. I massively suggest getting up off your ass and going for a walk or walk on a treadmill or sit on an exercise bike because sitting there is not pumping the blood around. The blood, the blood is what carries the nutrients to the muscle, which helps it recover. So that active recovery, getting out, going for a walk, doing something is going to pump blood to those muscle cells. And what does blood carry? Nutrients and nutrients are what we need to make those muscle cells recover. So active rest is a massive thing for me. Even if you go to the gym and just do a light pump session, stretch, get a massage, all of these tools will help in rec recovering your muscles a lot quicker. And again, these will only help to you reaching your goals a lot quicker. And the other thing as well is that you're going to feel fresher when it comes to your next workout. I see many people come into the gym and they they have still haven't recovered from the workouts before. And they're like, oh, God, I'm, this is sore and that's sore. And I'm like, well, what have you done? Well, I, I did nothing. I just sat home. I had a hot bath and, you know, I rested. You go, yeah, you're resting, but you're not really giving your body ultimate time or, sorry, ultimate tools to recover. So, yeah, active active rest is a massive one for me. I think that's so much better than just sitting on your ass doing nothing. Go out for a, you know, say, go for a walk or a cycle or anything or just go to the gym again like i said before just go to the gym and do a light workout anything just to get you moving have a stretch a rested body is always going to be mentally and physically stronger than a fatigued one so you know when we were saying before about you're sitting on the couch and you feel like oh I don't, you know i don't want to go to the gym i'm tired if you'd have done that active rest or even if you use that okay i'm too tired to do okay we'll get up and do something do something don't sit on your ass because that's only going to make you feel 10 times worse. How many times have you said, I've had a rest day and you sat in front of the telly all day and you felt like absolute shit? That's why. Your body needs to move. Your body needs to pump blood around. It needs oxygen. It needs nutrients. It needs blood. It needs all these things for a healthy body and a healthy mind. So stay active as much as you possibly can. Okay, so sorry if I bored you. I'm going to shut up now. Basically, those five there are my core values. I stick by them and they've taken years for me to really cement into my brain. I mean, because there's many times I've, I've veered off all five of those and regretted it. So now I try and stick to those five and I implement those five in every single workout and training program that I work out for myself. I said, so... I try and build them into all my clients and athletes training programs. So they will adhere to my five values without even realizing it. And hopefully they trust in those five values. Okay. You know, not every client is going to like the way you do things. And the main thing is not to take it to heart, but stick to your core. values. don't start changing them just because somebody doesn't like them. They're your cup. They're your core values. 
you suck your flag in the ground, you stuck your past saying, this is what I stand for, this is what I... And people will believe in you more if you can believe in yourself. That's the, that's the main thing. People can question me all day long about my methods. And they might be right. I might be doing something wrong, but I believe in what I'm doing and I will stick to it. And at the end of the day, if I believe, like I said, if I believe in myself, then my clients will believe in me. And hopefully I can build up that good reputation and that good repertoire with my clients. So I hope that's given you a bit of food for thought about what your own core values are. And you might have even sat and listened to those and thought, you know, some of those, yeah, I do that without without even realizing it. And, and if that's if you have, then great. And it might help you come up with your own core values. So I'm just going to sign off by saying that, that that's, like I say, they, they are my five core values and I'm sticking to them, basically. Okay, so thanks for listening. Stay strong and I will see you in episode three. <laughs>